Good morning, afternoon, and good evening. And welcome once again to Geometry Creative Week. It, it is day one. It is very exciting. Uh, my name is Manuel Borde. I'm Regional Creative Lead of North America. And in the next 30 minutes or so, I will attempt to define with a very subjective approach what Iconic is in the world of retail. Uh, I'm going to point out to uh, the subheadline there, as you can see, uh, Throughout the week, we will have a different take uh, on what Iconic means to each one of the regional creative leads. Uh, and that's what's so fun about it, right? So uh, what we're gonna do now, and, and you can see is that I've highlighted first the two main words that we need to, let's say, have a clarification before we even start. Those words are, uh, as I was saying, Iconic, and the other one is retail. It is important for us to understand and define what retail is. Uh, now, us as geometry, we know it, we perfectly and fully understand that retail as we know it no longer exists. What we thought at the beginning was just, you know, the physical space where uh, the process of uh, selling goods and services is, has now moved into a digital virtual space. Sometimes it pops out of nowhere and surprises you uh, where you go. Uh, and it's something that even you can, uh, you know, carry in your pockets. Uh, so that's very important for us to understand that what we're looking at now is not an approach of how we can do a great, just great shopper, but how we can think about retail as a more omnipresent thing. You will see as well our big debate on what iconic is. Uh, I was looking at, um, at an article written by Liz Madigan in a blog I like called Medium, and she was defining how we have sometimes overused the term iconic. Uh, and it's not just that it's overused, it's just that it's so wide. And, and I think that you will see, I think one of the most bizarre slides I've ever built, uh, putting the Beatles and Grumpy Cat in one single slide, but it actually represents how wide the definition of iconic is, right? No, no doubt the Beatles were an iconic uh, uh, symbol when it comes to music. Uh, but I can also argue, and we can all also argue that Grumpy Cat was an iconic, uh, uh, um, let's say, representation of you know, today's social media. Uh, so what I want us to understand is not to take it into the say about what, how are we going to define iconic in a way that we're going to do something that is equally good as the Beatles or equally as fantastic as Grumpy Cat. No, let's, let's look into iconic in a different lens. What we should focus on when we talk about iconic is focus on what iconic means to us, means to our clients, and means to our peers, and of course, our consumers. Although I wanna just highlight there consumers because, I mean, sometimes we as advertisers, you know, we, we put a lot of pressure upon ourselves, right? Uh, about creating uh, work or giving advertising the responsibility of creating iconic, uh, you know, uh, things for society, which sometimes is not the case. Uh, so let's, uh, let's think about uh, what that means to us, you know, as geometry. Uh, and I'm going to tell you here uh, what it means to me. Great work for me is work that is CSR. And you would imagine that what I'm referring to is a, uh, you know, brand purpose component or consumer, uh, sorry, uh, corporate social responsibility angle, but it's not actually that. For me, great work is work that is, culturally cool, it's smart, and it's resourceful. So what does it mean? Culturally cool is that, is this work, you know, awe or surprising enough for me to share it with someone, yeah? Does it involve cool tech, cool stunts, cool innovation? You know, can I go and say, wow, that was actually pretty cool, right? And is it culturally relevant? That's a major part of it as well. When you go and think about smart, is does this idea actually hack or beat the system? Does it go around the rules? You know, uh, did we discover a new media use for it? You know, and, and, and the reaction that we're looking for here is saying, wow, that, that was actually pretty smart. And when you talk about resourceful is we don't necessarily need to think about iconic and thinking about those uh, uh, immense budgets that, you know, have to and depend on a big celebrity to be able to execute it we're thinking more about the right budget for it, right? And the right budget means finding a solution 
that doesn't require spending that much money if it's not necessary or needing a celebrity if you don't need to use a celebrity. A great, great example of this is all most of the work that we see in, um, in the Super Bowl. Uh, that not necessarily is iconic, it just has huge uh, budgets and uh, a long cast of celebrities, right? Uh, so and I, I guess another question that we ask ourselves when we talk about resourceful is, do we make the idea happen no matter what the budget is, right? And can we make it happen? Uh, so let's have a look at some examples of work. So think about as well, a good exercise that we can do ourselves is, and, and I like to do this very personally, is can this idea make it to an at week or at age headline? And I think that this doesn't just apply for people that are working in the States. Uh, while I was working in Dubai, we had this in our mind as well, being able to have this idea being recognized and talked about in social media and different blogs specialized as well. And if it does, then what would that headline be? And that's a good exercise to see whether we have in our hands something that is culturally cool, that is smart, and that is resourceful. I'm going to show you a couple of work uh, examples. And I, uh, full disclosure, I am going to show you work that I have uh, either creatively led or uh, worked on. Uh, so I can show you exactly examples that I can talk about. Um, no doubt that there's a lot of iconic work out there, but I thought that it would be easier for me to explain to you uh, uh, what I believe is great based on the work that I've judged. So the first example is the Prill One Drop Bottle. And this is a clear example of how a client comes to you and tells you, I have a problem. And the problem was pretty clear. Uh, Prill had for many years, uh, maybe even decades, had positioned itself with a very clear benefit of the product, which is one drop is enough to wash a whole full set of dishes. Uh, the problem was that its main competitor, which was Ferry, uh, had more budget, had more power, and started to steal from Prill that big claim. So a ask would be very simple, right? Go full on steam in the retailer and shopper, and let's create a, you know, a very nice key visual with a very powerful line that talks about, you know, the power of one drop. But then the question is, why would you say it if you can prove it? And that's what led to the Prill One Drop bottle. Prill dishwashing liquid has concentrated power. That means to completely clean a whole set of dishes, it only takes one drop of Prill. That's what we've been saying for years. <laughs> Until our biggest competitor started promising the same. Oops. If I were you, I'd use that drop. So to retain ownership and make our everlasting promise big again, we decided to go small. Meet the Prill One Drop Bottle. The exact Prill detergent bottle reduced to the size of a thumbnail. Carefully crafted in a six month production process. The special edition bottle was announced through a film. And soon went big in supermarkets across UAE. To amplify the message, we created a series of short films, GIFs, and posts for social media. The drop was so powerful, it made quite a splash. It's this small. I mean, look at this one and like, look at this. Prill, making dishwashing easier and much more efficient, one drop at a time. So yeah, so the Prill bottle. Um, for the next case, um, 
it's a good example of how uh, we should be very proactive as well on proposing uh, the where. Uh, and again, we have a case of a client that we had, which was Unilever client, and uh, the very request about repositioning, or not repositioning, just reinforcing a whole idea of, uh, you know, uh, pushing uh, kids to uh, enjoy and to go outside and play and actually get dirty. Uh, so the big question is, how do you break out of the clutter uh, in retail? And our solution to them was actually taking the product outside of it and going into a space where you can surprise. And here's where we decided a great space for this would be actually where you know parents would buy these clothes for their kids right before they get dirty. And here's where we came up with a sampling innovation that as well included uh, a new way of uh, product testing. Detergent sampling at supermarkets has been around for years. And for years, it has been the same. As an advocate of an active lifestyle for children, Omo needed something new to grab people's attention and reinforce their dirt is good claim. It needed to break away from the supermarket clutter, literally. So we took it to children's clothes before dirt even came. Introducing the OMO tag, made completely out of OMO laundry detergent and 100% water soluble. Just remove the tag and place it inside your washer. One tag is enough to remove the dirt of three messy garments. To launch the OMO tag, we partnered with Sports Forever, Beirut's largest sporting goods store for adults and children adding over 5,000 detergent tags to clothing across their multiple stores. With an online film, we made sure the tag went from stores to people across the world. The OMO tag will make its way across new stores in four different markets. OMO tag. The first wash is on us. Go out and play. Here's another story of how we can take their um, KFC restaurant and be able to engage with the consumers. Um, always keeping in mind, of course, what the promise of the brand is, right? Which is finger licking good. So. Uh, incentivizing people to keep on eating with their hands. Uh, we came up with a very clever solution uh, and let's say fun in a way about how we can turn uh, most of our in-store material, which is from the, you know, the receipts plus the bags plus, uh, you know, the trays mats into uh, a napkin that they can use after they have eaten. Kentucky Fried Chicken is delicious. And eating at our restaurants is fun and super casual. To celebrate how cool is eating with your hands and because the second thing we heard after, yum, is always, more napkins please, we heard and we delivered. KFC got napkinized. The napkins that revolutionized napkins. By utilizing a special ink-resistant tissue paper, strong enough to wipe but thin enough to get printed, we gave a second usage to all the paper inside our restaurants, inviting everyone to eat the way they love, with their hands. We napkinized a lot of stuff, placemats, food bags, posters, flyers, even the cashier receipt. Basically, everything. The napkinization started in Dubai and Beirut in January 2020, but the news spread fast, as did the napkins, reaching more than 7,000 people on ground and millions more on social media. KFC napkinized. Napkins in any way you can imagine.
because there is nothing better than eating KFC with your bare hands. We do it with a knife and a fork. Donald Trump. And for the last example I'm going to show you, uh, I brought uh, the Promoticon and I brought an app. And of course, um, here's kind of like the, the place where you go inside the purest of heart would say, uh, why would this be an example of a retail uh, execution? Uh, and the big question that we have is, well, today, even some of the apps, you know, uh, double up as a retail space. If you think about it, your app icon is the front of your store. Within the app, you're going to drive into sale. You're going to even have push and banners to be able to get them to do the transaction. And it just uh, amps into that, into a retail space that you're carrying in your phone and you're carrying in your pocket. So what we had now, uh, or what we had then, sorry, with uh, our Promoticon um, uh, idea, what McDonald's came in with the problem was that, hey, I'm not getting people to download the app. And when they do, I'm not getting people to engage with the app. So how do I keep them constantly engaged? Uh, of course, the first thing that you think about when you get a brief like this is like, hey, let's go change the app. Let's add some gaming. Let's add some, you know, some pretty exciting, engaging thoughts. Uh, but then again, uh, McDonald's came back to us and said, hey, you, you, you of course, uh, cannot touch anything of the interface of the app. Uh, so we were like, okay, uh, so what do we do then? Uh, and here's where we say, okay, how do you find a hack around it? Or how do you go around the rules? Um, and here's where we have uh, found out that something as simple as the app icon can be updated constantly. Uh, and here's where we came up with the McDonald's McDelivery app. It's easy, it's fast, it's delicious. But it's also just a regular delivery app. With so many on our phone already, our problem was not just getting people to download it, but to keep using it. Changing the whole app platform takes time, lots of time. So instead, we created a promotion changing something smaller, our app icon. McDonald's presents the Promoticon. Whatever the app icon looks like, you get for free with your order. If it's a Big Mac, you get it for free. If it's fries, easy, free fries, and more, much more. The app icon became the media, and all we had to do was update a new icon to the App Store and Play Store every week. To launch the Promoticon, we went outside people's phones. We didn't need to push any notification. People were actually pushing us for new updates. the icon look like today so here you go four ideas um, and if you think about it and we go back to what we were talking about at the beginning of our presentation what does it mean for us what does it mean for our peers what does it mean what do they mean for our clients these were ideas that uh, not just have the component of being you know sometimes culturally cool smart and very resourceful they were also ideas that meant a lot for our clients and for their business. Uh, these are not just ideas that got awarded in festivals like Flanks and Cannes. They actually got heavily awarded in Effie's. Uh, so kind of like makes you understand that when you aim to do great work, it should be aiming to do work that works in all senses in all uh, worlds, right? Uh, so what can we do looking forward? Uh, and how can we get... Um, to work that we are again uh, proud of doing, proud of showing, and that works perfectly for the business of our clients and brings effective results. I'm going to talk to you about five things that we can do. The first one is to unlearn the rules. Now, uh, I want to also have a, a kind of like a, a disclaimer in a way about the work that you saw previously uh, was basically created and led in an agency that was not necessarily focused like we are on retail and creative commerce. Uh, that at the same time 
um, allowed us to be a little bit more free on the things that we were proposing because we didn't understand that there were already some rules set on retail. But that's the thing. That's what, what you should do. You know, you should always think about, okay, I understand that there's certain rules in certain retail spots that I cannot do, but I can always ask, right? And, and that's what we want to do. Uh, that what we want to move is from a culture of it cannot be done or it's not allowed or it's not possible to do to a culture of let me see how I can do it or let me ask if it's possible. Uh, and here's where we can get, you know, very pleasant surprises of how far we can go uh, in the different retail spaces, uh, whether they're physical or digital or, or, or they pop up out of nowhere to surprise someone. Uh, number two, we have to reimagine how we concept. And, and I'm very happy to say that at least what we're doing now uh, leads to that. Reimagining how we concept means a line of copy and a key visual is not an idea, right? That could be the start of it, but it's not actually the idea. An idea is the idea, right? There's so many things you can, you can do that are an idea, right? An innovation is an idea. Smart packaging is an idea a stunt, you know, a promo activation, a pop-up experience, a hack, you know, cultural response. These are all ideas. The other ones are not. This is just a line of copy and a key visual. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that we have been reinforcing in North America and we have been, uh, you know, advancing on that and we have been doing. Be curious. And I don't say be curious like, you know, very romantically, everyone will say, yeah, parents will say, yeah, you have to be curious to be able to do something. But it makes sense, you know? Uh, if I am going to do something in a certain space uh, that involves a certain app or that involves a certain retailer, well, just don't take the word for it, you know, go and explore walking into the store and seeing how it is, you know, that try out uh, 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 the app, try out, you know, download uh, whatever it is, right? So it's kind of like that moment where you go in and said, hey, you know, in, in order for us to make great campaigns in uh, social media platforms. I really have to actually open a profile on that platform and explore all the possibilities I can have with it. Uh, and the same thing goes with retail spaces that are physical or online or whatever it is. Um, we have to explore these channels. You cannot just uh, you know, take it from whoever is telling you how it is. Go and see yourself how it is, right? And that will allow you to be more creative in this sense as well. Be proactive. I, I, I cannot insist on this one as much. This, I mean, should perfectly be number one here, right? Uh, and, it's, and it's true, like our industry, we, of course, sometimes are a little bit too reactive, right? And, and, and less proactive. And I think that the perfect balance is, of course, being 70% proactive and 40%, sorry, 30% reactive and 40%. Uh, proactive. Yeah. I know that is more than 100%, but that's the whole idea of this. Because if you really, really want to do great work, this is work that doesn't necessarily just fit from 9 to 5 p.m. You know, it's work that you take home, that you're thinking of it constantly. How can it make it better? How can we, how can we improve it? And it requires extra dedication and it requires putting in extra hours. Uh, you know, to tailor that case so it looks fantastic, to make sure that each part of design looks perfect. Uh, that's what you need to do. So that you need to always give that little extra and that little extra should not be asked for, should you yourself should bring it on the table. And last but not least, and it's something that we always, uh, and I coined this to Burger King it. And of course everyone knows and admires the work that Burger King does. Uh, but we also need to understand that Burger King doesn't need to roll out, uh, you know, globally or nationally to do work that everyone knows about. Actually, as a matter of fact, most of the work that you know about it, you haven't even experienced yourself, but you've heard of it. We don't have to go fully globally or to all markets. You, all you need is just one market to test it, to do it once, you know, to, to understand that potential about making it, documenting it properly, and then amplifying it. And here's where I say that, uh, you know, there's a big lending hand of working together with the, cor with the corporate communications team and the PR team. Every single campaign that you think is great work should be uh, worked together because it's a big part of it as well. 
and sometimes we sin because we just do great work, but we never, you know, document it and we never tell anyone about it. And only, only the people that actually go into the retail stores and, you know, have the results and everything are the people that can experience it, but you can do so much more. We can amplify it so much more. And that's exactly what Burger King does. So uh, it's a, it's, it's something as well that we should do. So there's the five things that we can do. Of course, we can do much more, but I think that just to, to wrap it up, it's clear, you know, we have, we, we are in a part of our storyline and we are in a point where we got perfectly the mission and the definition of what we are and we have the tools and now it's the time to start getting the work that defines us, right? And it's that time to bring in that great work that we call iconic. Uh, and uh, that's it, that, that, that is our presentation, that is our take on what iconic could be um i'd love to hear uh, of course uh, your questions and your opinions uh, i guess that um if we are already kind of thing running out of time don't just shoot me a message and i would gladly reply to anything and i'm really really looking forward uh to our uh, global council where we're going to start seeing some of this uh, amazing work